Welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing as it helps out the channel. Give this video a like if you do like it. So this is a review for Baseball Bugs, released in 1946. It's the 465th in the series and it's directed by Frizz Freely. You can find this on the Looney Tunes Gone Collection Volume 1 DVD set, the Platinum Collection Volume 1 Blu-ray set, and on the recent Bugs Buddy 80th Anniversary Blu-ray set. Me today is my fellow baseball fan, well, I don't know if I am, but anyway, <laughs> Manny Cruz, say hi. Hello, everybody. Now, as always, I can't show the full cartoon here, so here's a brief synopsis for those who may not have seen this wonderful cartoon. So it's the Gas House Gorillas versus the Teetotalers, and Bugs is not happy that his team is losing. So what does he do? Well, he decides to go up against the Gas House Gorillas himself, taking all positions of the baseball game. How about that? Now the following was done as an audio commentary, which I had to take down from YouTube due to a request from Warner Brothers Legal. So what you're going to see now is a cut version of that commentary, which still features all the facts, a few new surprises and discoveries I've done since then, and at the end I also give a rating, so enjoy. This one is a very special cartoon for me because it is actually the very first cartoon I ever saw restored because it was the first cartoon on the Looney Tunes Gone Collection Volume 1 set. Number one. Numero uno. If I said it correctly there, Manny. <laughs> yes, Numero you did. Uno. <laughs> very good. I definitely saw this cartoon growing up as a kid in the 90s. And when I first got into Looney Tune research, when I started buying the books and going on the internet forums back in the day in the early 2000s, and I said, you know what? I'm going to start recording all these cartoons for my own personal collection. This was the first one I ever recorded. I still remember it off of Cartoon Network sometime around 2001. And again, when I saw the DVD restoration, it was just absolutely incredible. Freeze actually did two other baseball cartoons. He did Bull of a Deer from the Bronx and Porky's Baseball Broadcast, both of which, um, as we watch this incredibly stupid conga, <laughs> the conga scene, it. sorry, that gets me every time. Um, he would actually reuse gags from those two cartoons in here. Um, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, you know, if something worked really well originally, you know, I don't have a problem with using it, because people didn't, didn't binge watch back then, so. As we see in the background, the Mike Maltese Ace Duck, like they would insert in these, <laughs> in, in these advertisements, uh, people's names, just for, the, just for a bit of fun, because why not? And does your tobacco taste differently lately? <laughs> yep, that's a, that, it's a marketing slogan. I just forgot which one. So we can drink some Manza champagne. I mean, this HD restoration allows you to see some wonderful details. Like, look at the crowd. It's it, it's a suggested crowd, no doubt to save a bit of money, but uh, it, it just has this in, in really good look. I just wanted to say that I finally know what's the name of the song in the beginning of this cartoon during the opening credits. It's Saber and Spurs by John Philip Sousa. It's one of his marches. And now you know. <laughs> one of my favorite jokes right here. Oh, uh, Bat Boy. And like you said, Frizz has a habit of reusing jokes. And it's funny. We've gone from two cartoons based off of themes that are like arguably the masterpieces of that specific genre. So we were earlier talking about Book Review, which is the best books come to life cartoon. And this is arguably the – oh, nice pinup. Uh, this is arguably the best baseball short ever made in the studio and arguably ever in, you know, in, in classical animation. There's no other cartoon I can think of that could top this one. As a baseball fan, like, what would you say is the funniest pun, if you will, baseball-related pun in this one? Oh, this is a tough one. Um, ah, it's, it's, it's tough to say because there's so many different jokes that work so well. I mean, ah. Uh, masterpiece. This is my favorite scene. Like, you can go to the showers. I think, Bugs' is, is this... first use of the reverse psychology right here. I That's love right. it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, that done by Bugs. I know Daffy did it for the first time in Duck Soup to Nuts. And let's see if Austin Kelly will give me a, a medal. But I think that was a Virgil Ross scene when they were doing the reverse psychology thing. I hope I got that right. If I did, please give me a gold star. I really need him. So the reason I brought you on, man, is because... 
you like baseball and the previous two commentaries I did, well, I baseball's just not a thing here in Australia really. I mean it exists, but it's I think softball's more popular if anything, but anyway. That's something well, entirely you got, you so you got cricket over there, so I mean that counts and baseball originated from cricket. So Yeah. Close enough. Oh uh, yeah, but as uh, Robert Williams famously said, uh, cricket is basically baseball on Valium, and uh, it is it is true. <laughs> it, it is it is absolutely true. One thing I just love in particular is like uh, Bugs Bunny is playing every single position in this uh, cartoon picture: shortstop, second baseman, first baseman. And for those of you that don't know, there's no designated hitter because the designated hitter was in the American League in uh, baseball. You have the American League and National League. And the designated hitter, someone who only hits the ball, was not created until 1973. So if you're curious to wonder why that's not in this short, it's because this is from 1946. In the beginning of the cartoon, the announcer says this is taking place in the polo grounds. The polo grounds, for those of you who don't know, it was located in Upper Manhattan in New York City. I'm not a New Yorker myself, but I'm close. I'm from New Jersey. My dad's from New York. And, um, you know, it's a little baseball history, but also a little New York history. So the Polo Grounds, which was demolished sometime in the 60s, was the home of the New York baseball giants. So for Anthony and others that are not familiar, we had the baseball giants that moved to San Francisco and became the San Francisco Giants. And then the New York football giants, who weirdly are a New York team, but they play in my home state of New Jersey, and yeah, it's just a whole big, I don't even like the team. I don't like the Giants. This cartoon to me too, is like a love letter to New York baseball fans. Cause at this time, like I said, you had the New York baseball Giants that played in the polo grounds. You had the Brooklyn Dodgers who played in Ebbets Field. And now they're the Los Angeles Dodgers. And of course, the most famous team and my team personally, the New York Yankees who played in the original Yankee stadium, but they have the new Yankee stadium, which was finished about 10, 13 years ago around that time frame. And this is before the New York Mets. The New York Mets uh, first played in 1962. So, again, if you're wondering where they're at in this cartoon, they were not even a thought yet. And this Here ending with uh, Bugs and uh, the Statue of Liberty arguing is a reference to uh, Eddie Rochester Anderson. That's what the man said. He said that, which you've heard in other yeah. cartoons. And fortunately, this time without a stereotype. This is the second, and I believe of only two times, that Bugs Bunny came out of the drum instead of Porky. But... One thing I wanted to point out so with, with, with the final shot of, uh, of Bugs catching the ball after climbing up that flagpole is where the umpire... Uh, or is it the umpire? Or, or, yeah, anyway. It's <laughs> See, an this umpire, is how much I don't yes. know about baseball. <laughs> yeah. um, did he just climb up the side of the building to make that call? Like, it's a really weird shot that was set up, but it's just so dang funny when you, when you think about it more, more often. But, wow, there's just so much to unpack in this one. You know, and, and even if you're not into baseball like me, um, you know, I don't hate it, mind you. I just, it's just not something I got, got into being where I live, you know. But I tell you, it's it's just incredible that I'm learning a lot, of, a lot of American sports through these cartoons, like especially American football and baseball. And, you know, to the point where if I ever come to America one of these days and watch a baseball match, I'm going to say, well, where's the conga line? Where's the conga line? I came here for the conga line. But, you know. I will say, though, just to give you the heads up, you are not allowed to have a bat the size of a tree trunk in the game. That's number right. one. And number two. Yep. Writing um, this down. The, uh, yeah, so make sure you write it down in big letters. No tree trunk bats. And number two, um, the batter for the Gas House Gorillas definitely had a home run. Because once it leaves the stadium, that's – well, once it goes past, you know, the warning track and everything, it's definitely a home run. So – Bugs running out and taking the cab and everything wouldn't have even mattered because it would have been scored as a home run. Oh, another thing, too, I forgot to mention that the Gas House Gorillas, which uh, came back uh, in one of the recent Looney Tunes cartoons where they faced Porky and Daffy, I believe, and somebody will probably yell at me in the comments, that it's a reference to the Gas House Gang, which was the nickname of the 1934 St. Louis Cardinals, who I believe won the World Series that year. So little wow. little baseball trivia for you at the time. I mean, I wasn't alive in the 30s, but thank goodness for the Internet that teaches you all these different things. But I would you know what? I'll admit I do like baseball. I like I said, I am a Yankee fan. I've been a lifelong Yankee fan. But there are times that the sport is a little boring to watch. It's much better to see in person than it's to watch on TV. And you know, I think that's one of the reasons why American football is now more popular than baseball. 
But I really think that if they did incorporate a conga line into the sport, it would definitely make the games go by a lot faster and more fun. Yeah, t- totally agree. And in cricket too, they got they got to beat the conga line to cricket, I, I would think, um, and, <laughs> and you know, and stop taking that Valium because it, it really is a dull sport. But so here I am now adding in a rating because again, I wasn't doing ratings when I was doing the initial commentaries. This one is easily another 10 out of 10. It is truly a masterpiece. Everything works from start to finish. No gag is lousy. <laughs> Let me put it that way. And it's incredible. And this time around, I actually confirmed with Manny what he would rate this one. And he also said 10 out of 10. And so there you go. I actually asked him this time and I'm sure he's happy about that. So yeah, this is a 10 out of 10 cartoon and absolute masterpiece. <laughs> In any case, um, we'll wrap up this one, uh, this wonderful short. I mean, let us know in the comments you know, anything we did miss because there probably are some things we've missed. But um, thanks for teaching me a bit more about baseball. Now I need to get that Ken Burns documentary and uh, start learning a bit more, won't I? So <laughs> yep, and I got plenty uh, of books and articles to send your way. And I'll send yes, you a Yankee yes. hat from uh from the states to australia so you could be one of the cool kids <laughs> yes that's right that's right so as always guys thank you so much for listening and until next time take care and that's the end Follow that ball. Ha, 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 ha.